Just cut content for ReZero, Season 2, Episode 4. The wholesome family reunion. Not really, but, you know, we're still getting some closure. With 29 minutes of pure emotional buildup serving to cover a single chapter in the light novel, Episode 29 doesn't have very much in the way of cut content. It does, however, serve to provide a lot of context behind how Subaru acts throughout Season 1. Yep. Something that I'll sprinkle in with the minor events that were left behind from this episode. Is he literally just telling this guy to fuck off? I bet the biker said, wow, Kenichi, you're walking around that this early in the day? Did you lose your fucking job? Fuck you, biker. Why are you on your bike? Did you lose your job? So let's take a look at what the anime didn't show from Subaru's past, plus how it relates back to the Subaru we saw from season one. Let's begin. Let's Episode go. Episode 29, Parent and Child, covering chapter four of volume 10 of the light novel. Since it had been a few months since Subaru had started skipping school, Three. the average morning for him now consisted of waking up and watching the clock slowly inch its way towards 8 a.m. And then we stay in bed till 12, because at the very least, we can make an excuse and say, ah, it's too late, next time. This was because school for him started at 8.30, and given where he lived, it would take at least 20 minutes for him to get there by jogging. So if Subaru really wanted to make it to school on time, then he would have to leave before 8 a.m. Yeah, Once that but if you wait, right? If you wait for the time to go, then you can make excuses for yourself and say, ah, it's too late, right? I tried my best this time. Ah, we'll try again tomorrow. And then three months passes, and it's already too late, and you're in a fucking quicksand, and you're fucking drowning. That time had passed, though. There was really no point in trying to muster up the courage to go, since he would just be late anyway. It was a cycle of delinquency that always began with a deep sense of self-hatred. One that would normally subside once the clock struck eight. But that didn't seem to be the case today. For some reason, trial. Subaru just couldn't shake this clinging sense of guilt. It was an abnormal feeling that he'd been carrying ever since he woke up. I noticed that every time he was guilty, right? It was every time he was so slothful or any time he basically uh, reinforced his bad actions that led to him being who he is. So the trial is about overcoming your past and fixing your mistakes. So Subaru honestly did a really good job. I'm surprised at how well he did in the trial. Emilio failed immediately though. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think Amelia failed immediately because, like, the building started to stop glowing immediately as she went in. So she literally just, like, went in. And then the first thing, the, the first challenge, she immediately failed. But, like, Subaru seems like he's about to clear the trial. If the, I don't know what the last step is. But Echidna said, wow, you're, like, on record pace right now. This is pretty amazing. Oh, something was very clearly different about him. And even though his parents were acting the same way they always did, they too seemed to be a little bit strange. Subaru tried to recall what happened the day before, but that just seemed to make the discomfort he was feeling even worse. It was as if his usual feelings of guilt had now escalated into pain. Mm -hmm. A pain that wouldn't go away even when- And if this kept going on, I bet this would be the end of the trial, right? If he kept reinforcing his past mistakes, then I bet he would get kicked out of this trial. I don't know. He just like wake up from this dreamlike thing lose the trial and could he then try again i don't know when he went for the walk with his dad in fact just being in close proximity to him while in public caused enough pain to make it feel like his chest was about to implode because everyone is glazing dad and the comparisons to him right surely you are his son that's why subaru looked so troubled when he was walking beside him in any case the longer this walk went on for the more people they came across that seemed to know kenichi the shop owner, the housewife, and even the senior high school girl. Yeah, what the fuck was that? Senior high school girl, there's a gal- Bro, what the hell is happening? Like, why does Kenichi know? Is he pulling her number right now? Well, apparently they knew each other. I thought, like, he literally just picked up her number randomly. I'm like, what the fuck? But I thought that maybe he's doing this to introduce his son to her or something, but this is a crazy frame. All came up to say hi to Subaru's dad. They were moments intended to highlight the stark contrast between Subaru and his father. It's also how Subaru's inferiority complex becomes more apparent. That's a giga Especially Chad. Especially when the old man brought up stories of how Kenichi used to be such a troublemaker when he was younger. There was even a brief conversation that further compared the two's popularity by using the number of contacts each had as a scale. <laughs> if you remember in season one, we got nobody. We, didn't have we got like that pizza man, right? We got like mom, dad, pizza man, I don't know. Many contacts in his phone likely due to his lonely lifestyle while in middle school. On the other hand, Kenichi boasted about having pages and pages filled Ooh, with different girls' contact info. God damn! Wait, 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 why? 
Do you have a wife? Why do you have the contact info of a high school girl? OML, thank you for the tier one. Five months, man. I appreciate that. But like, what the fuck is going on here? What possible reason could he have to have a senior high school girl's contact info as a fucking father? <laughs> when he, what, what, what did the girl say? He's like, oh my God, he, you're the guy that my mom talks about all the time. Are you my, are you my actual dad? Cause I don't have a dad, but my mom talks about you all the time at home. Of course, this was a rather odd thing for Subaru's dad to be saying. But Kenichi made it clear that his love was intended for his family alone. Okay. This caused the pain in Subaru's chest to emerge even stronger than before, leading Subaru to finally realize where it was this pain was coming from. It was becoming more and more apparent that it stemmed from being around his parents. For some strange reason, the closer he was to either of them, the more potent the feeling became. What? I thought the pain was all about... There's a specific moment when the pain happens. Right? It's not simply by being near the parent. It's about his actions, right? His actions of just falling back into his old habits of feeling lazy or slothful or feeling insecure. All these things that he did in the past, right? But he's better now, right? Just because you're close to the parent doesn't mean he got hurt. Later on, he's literally by mom and dad, but he's corrected himself and he's able to move on. It's not just the mom and dad's proximity. I think it has to do with like his lack of actions that led to the pain and anxiety attacks. He thought perhaps his guilt had finally caught up to him and was now overwhelming his entire body. In any case, it seemed to be related to the topic that Kenichi wanted to speak to Subaru about next. You got a girl? As we know, Kenichi felt it was an appropriate day to finally confront Subaru about his new lifestyle. It's not like he was blaming him for doing anything wrong though. In fact, if Subaru wanted to take a couple years to work through his own problems, then that was something that Kenichi was completely fine with. Even couple years nah man we only need like two months two months including what well, excluding the loops of him just rapidly dying over and over again to correct his mistakes that's the best fucking teacher in life bro <laughs> it's kind of crazy bro couple of years nah he can fix himself he just has to die multiple times and have to suffer for his mistakes and then he'll learn from it it's a crazy fucking therapy and if he was spending his days sitting around his room doing nothing so long as he was working towards getting through whatever it was he was going through, then Kenichi was completely okay with it. Where he would have been upset was if Subaru had given up. It's a series of lines that tie all the way back to episode 18, back to when Subaru was trying to get Rem to run away with him. In this episode, the What did he say? He said like, you don't know the real me. I'm a fucking loser. I've lived a pampered life. I've wasted everything. This is who I am. I hate myself. It was a moment where Subaru told Rem all about how he did absolutely nothing before yeah, he came here. wasted his life. How all his powerlessness and incompetence was the direct result of becoming this empty shell of a person. That's right. And then to boast such prideful remarks is just pure arrogance when he hasn't accomplished anything. This of course referring to his life of isolation. But to add even more to that, Knowing how Subaru has always been compared to his father, that's something that adds even more context to what Subaru was saying here. Imagine Subaru's dad got isekai with Subaru, and his dad was just a fucking giga chat pulling all the girls. <laughs> Amelia falls in love with him. <laughs> Everybody falls in love with him, he just has a heart. Subaru just- and then the disparity between them just grows even more than he joins the cult. And then Subaru's dad is the, the true hero of the story and Subaru like joins the cult and and then all the if routes all converge into one damn bro. Damn, could you imagine? What Subaru was doing back in his own world was something that no one could really even call living. That's why he felt he could finally start to live again when he found him- We need the dad in the story. I want him in. Dude, Al is already confirmed to be an isekai character. Why can't we have more? Bring dad in. Drop him in. Just like fucking SAO season 4 at the very end where everyone's just link starting, bro. I don't give a shit. Don't give me a reason. Just, just fucking summon the dad. I don't need a reason. ...himself in this new world. It's also why he seemed to be so accepting of his new circumstances. He felt he could start this new life as a new person who wasn't just recognized as- And this pose. This pose is not just a dumb pose. Yes, it is a cringe dumb pose, but there's so much lore because like this symbolizes how he was trying to be kind of like a class clown, but try to stand out when he falls short in academics, athletics, right? But that is the root cause of his failures. 
trying to be something he's not. Trying to fucking super aggro, like, uh, pick me attention type. Everyone thinks it's fucking cringe. But later on in the episode, you, he does the pose to get in front of dad. But this time, it's different. Because now he understands. He's aware of his problems. And it's like, kind of like endearing because he's now owning it, you know? It, he's like owning this pose and it's now symbolizing his growth. It's Kenichi's son. It was an opportunity to finally become someone special. But after going through all those hardships prior to saving Amelia, that's when he realized that nothing about him had changed at all. He was just the same old person who only cared about how others saw him. So as we saw Subaru yelling to Rem how nothing about him had changed, we couldn't really fully understand what he meant. But now we know that the reason he cared so much about what others thought about him was because of that sense of inferiority he got yep. from growing up as Kanichi's son. This was just one of many different reveals to Subaru's character which explains why he acted a certain way in a previous episode. Another would be from the time when he was working at the mansion. Mm. If you remember from when he was just- The super tryhard time? Cause like, again, it, I, I think a lot of the moments in, in this run, he was trying so fucking hard but it was actually counterproductive. And him trying super hard was making him more suspicious. Just like how he tried super hard during his high school debut and it just flopped. Starting out. Subaru would have these sudden outbursts of excessively theatrical behavior. Yep. Something that became more frequent the more stressed he was. This was because this was the only way that Subaru knew how to interact with others. You see, when he had closed himself off from everyone who wasn't his family, the only person Subaru could use as a reference to build relationships was his father. The thing is, his dad always acted in this over-the-top <laughs> manner that normally wouldn't be suited to meeting new people. So, as we saw in the high school flashback, yeah. Subaru tried to use this extravagant behavior to make new friends. <laughs> Even the dad kind of like doing those theatric shit for fun and it kind of suits him. Subaru <laughs> tried to do the same shit but it just fell flat and the execution was cringe. But that only ended up making the environment Ooh. he was in more stressful, thus causing- is he putting a bucket on his head? This must be like imagery, like symbolism. Cause it, unless he actually got bullied and they put a fucking bucket on his head. The people behind him, they seem less like bullies and more of regular kids that's kind of turned off by his behavior and saying, don't make eye contact with that kid. I don't know unless they put the bucket on his head. ...his outbursts to become more frequent, just like how it did in the mansion. It was a tendency that Kanichi saw he needed to correct right here. So, he told Subaru that there was a time and place for his high-strung behavior. True. Even though Subaru had never seen it before, Kenichi did have a side to him that was closer to one of common sense and appropriate conduct. I think he's right. There's a time and place for everything, and the perfect situation is in Arc 1. Remember Arc 1? At the end, Reinhardt showed up, he clutched, and it's a happy ending. And Subaru does this cringe-ass pose, and he tells Amelia, Oi, shouldn't I de deserve a gift? And it's like, Shh. Give me your name. It's fucking cringe, but it is very theatrical. But I think the time and place is correct there. That is the moment to kind of do that shit. It actually is kind of endearing. It's kind of funny. But, you know, there's also, again, not the right time and place to do shit. One that Subaru never realized he needed since he thought he could simply mimic his father's behavior to become popular. When we move on to the next half of the episode, Mother. Subaru bowing before he left his room was to commemorate the five years he spent in the only place he could call his own. Five he years. He knew that this would be the last time he would ever see it. So he felt the need to show it a small gesture of respect before leaving. Okay. As Subaru went to go It would have been funnier if he bowed to all the different figurines and posters individually. See his mother. She was shocked to find him actually wearing his uniform. You see, when Subaru came into the house asking to know where his uniform was, Naoko initially thought that Subaru wanted to burn it. So while Subaru was upstairs getting ready, burn it. Naoko had spent the time in the kitchen preparing potatoes and skewers so that she could use the fire from his uniform to start a barbecue. She is insane. I don't know if she's stupid or if she's a ge mad, mad genius. This mom is thinking the way that she approaches things because she's not dumb though. You see the mother's intuition. She knows everything about Subaru, but when you listen to the dialogue, it just... I can't help but think like there's some sort of madness in there. Subaru couldn't believe that this was his own mother's reaction to him wanting to get ready for school. But I guess it was just that unlikely for him to actually want to go. In any case, when Subaru was Mayo. offered the mayonnaise, he eventually did end up taking it. Okay. It's not like he wasn't a fan of mayo. Oh yeah, the mayo! 
up. I forgot. Memory snow shit. Neo. He just didn't like it as much as his parents did. Oh my god, there it is. Which is honestly still a much bigger fan than the average person. In fact, there was actually a collection of mail lids stuffed into the corner of his room. A total of 776 which displayed Aww. his love for the product. 776? I mean, it's one more and it's 777, lucky 7. Casino, ding 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 ding, is there any significance to this number? Probably not. The only significance to the numbers I think we should be aware of in ReZero is 400. 400 years ago before Subaru arrived, right? 400 years ago, fucking witches all die, pre, like, post witch, like, post 400, like, this is crazy. I hear that people even call this shit. Like, um, what, what is it? Yeah, seven is the number of the sins, and six is also the, uh, what's it called? The number of the archbishops and the amount of witches that Satala ate, so, y you know, there, there may be some significance here, but, um, also, the 400 number, people literally say, like, like you, you know, like before Christ, after Christ timelines, right? Like, 200 BC, AD, you know, there's like different timelines. Like, in this show, they use Subaru as a reference point to say, like, before arrival, after arrival, you know? Subaru sounds more like Jesus Christ the more I think about it. And let me cook. Because there's a lot of themes of Christianity, the Bible, the lore, regarding the forbidden fruits as well, the Appa theory, right? There's a lot of those shit. Seven deadly sins as well. Absolutely. Before Christ, after Christ, before arrival, shit like that. And, and, the fact that, and what does Jesus do? Jesus literally dies for the sins of other people. Now, that's not exactly what Subaru is, right? Subaru often dies due to his own sins, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's um, impossible to rationalize how this whole dying of sins kind of also relates with the whole Jesus Christ theme, before Christ, after Christ, before arrival, 400 years. Like, I, I think that there's a huge, huge lore of the Bible, religion, shit like this tied in with ReZero. I mean, it's not just a coincidence at this point. There's repeated over, over, exactly, Jesus also comes back to life. Remember the, and remember the forbidden fruit, right? You take the forbidden fruit, what does the Subaru get, right? You get the knowledge, forbidden knowledge, right? You sin, you get the forbidden knowledge, and what is that shit? It's the memory in the different timelines that you should not know about which helps Subaru become this undefeatable fucking general on the field, right? Exactly, he dies to save others. There are so many different points connecting ReZero and how Tape, Nagatsuki Tape, is obviously inspired by that shit and just sprinkles it in. I love it. Constellations as well, right? There's a whole thing about Pleiades, Subaru, you know. The fact that Aldebaran is supposed to be a follower of Pleiades, which hints at Al following Subaru and showing him favorability. Subaru being the fucking uniter, right? Six stars in the Subaru fucking logo. Six witches, archbishops. He unites people. It's, there's a lot of fucking things. It's like not even schizo theory at this point. The author is intentionally doing this for us to pick it up. But with this newest one, his collection was now at triple sevens. Oh, there it is! A rather decent accomplishment if you're not comparing him to Kenichi, who recently reached quadruple sevens. <laughs> That's a lot of mayo. Like, like, just think about how much a regular mayo bottle is, and multiply it by this number. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Anyway. Those two scenes were pretty much the only ones not mentioned during the parts with Subaru's mother, and everything after this was pretty much identical. So there's not much else to speak to in the way of cut content. But I do want to talk a little bit more about the context this episode gives to Subaru's past actions. Okay. Aside from the ones that I pointed out already, there's a user on Reddit who outlined quite a few more of these instances, and I'll link their comment in the description so that you can- Can we farm this? Maybe. Maybe. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it later. May maybe. Maybe. You can read for yourself what they are. But the one that I want to share in this video goes back to a scene from episode 13. Back to when Subaru proclaimed himself to be Amelia's knight. When Julius intervened to tell him that this was a title he was un- Remember this? <laughs> in front of the white knight, Subaru was being a bigger white knight. That giga joke is actually one of the funniest jokes. <laughs> He's just like, are you serious? You were literally white knighting harder than literal actual white knights. We are the white knights and you're, you're white knighting even harder. Worthy of having. Subaru's reply was one that just projected his own problems onto the current situation. 
He wanted to believe that being a knight wasn't that big of a deal at all. To believe that it was just a position that Julius was born into. Disrespectful. Something he received by sharing the same name as his father. As we now know though, we can apply these words back to how Subaru felt in his old life. To how he felt while growing up as Kenichi's son. A name that he felt he had to live up to. So what Subaru was saying about Julius was actually how he felt himself. about himself. Exactly. As Another point of projection, right? Quite often, Subaru's outlashes is him hating himself and telling himself all those things, but to someone else. This happens to Oto when being angry about Rem and his inability to save. It happened to Amelia when, she, you know, that run where Amelia died, where Subaru was like, this is your future. Due to your irrational mistakes, due to your lack of whatever, right? Mountains of corpses will pile up. This is your future. But, you know, he's talking to himself. Especially the part about trying to use his dad's name to act all superior. But, yeah, there's definitely... Beyond that, there is also something I just didn't talk about because it's not really cut content because it existed in the episode is... The craziest shit is his dialogue with the mom and the dad. There's a quite often where the dad or mom will say something nice and supportive. Like, for example, don't worry, Subaru. As, you know, as long as you're trying your best, you know, as long as the end result is fine, it's okay. And Subaru is like, oh, really? Does that mean I can just do whatever the fuck I want? And, and, and as long as the end justifies it means everything is fine? And I'm like, huh. Quite often, Subaru says some weird fucking shit. Same with the mom. And I'm like, is this dialogue intentional for us to try to pick up on subtle hints of... Uh, foreshadowing based on the dialogue? I don't know, but I, I guess the dialogue with the mom, the most important thing was about how there's a wholesome part about how you should like kids aren't supposed to do things for their parents. The parents had them because they want to do something for you. And then it's all about how Subaru, even if he doesn't deserve them, he'll simply make them mine. And then at the end, he'll prove his worth to them. I feel like those lines are super, super important and kind of highlights his character more. Definitely plenty more situations like this from season one. So if you happen to come across any yourself, then feel free to leave a comment down below. I think we'll definitely have to go read the comments section later. But uh, hey, that's the Annie News video for you. Please go give it a like. I know it's a shorter one, but you know, it's not really much breeze zero lower, but more of, you know, Subaru's backstory and talking with the parents and stuff. Very wholesome episode. I'll see you next time.